You might have heard of the company At Games. They make those cheap plug and play consoles that feature retro games. You typically hear a lot of bad things about At Games and their products, but do they really deserve the hate? Well, let's take a look. What's going on guys? It's Poger coming at you with another video. All right, we're going to be talking about At Games. Are we really going to do this? If you're familiar with this device, you probably already know where we're going with this. So I've been making weekly videos since January. If you like what I do, feel free to hit that subscribe button right there. It's only a small thing, but it really helps our community grow. We're trying to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Only you can help make that happen. Also, don't forget to join our Discord server. We got about 180 members in there right now. Just go to discord.poger.net or click on the link in the description. All right, well, let's make the best of it. In the early 2000s, retro plug and plays were becoming very popular. These were cheap units that contained a few games, all in one package. These were nice because they're very cheap, usually only about $20, making them great gifts. One of the most well-known companies making plug-and-plays was At Games. They worked with numerous retro game companies in order to make these plug-and-plays possible, but they've had varying relationships with each of them, some positive and some negative. First, let's talk about At Games and Atari. At Games secured the license to distribute Atari's retro titles, so as a result, they created multiple Atari flashback titles. These were mock-up consoles that were designed to look like the originals, not just controllers, and you could actually plug them into the walls, unlike the Jack Pacific ones. They had a rocky start with Atari Flashback 1. This one got mostly negative feedback because the console used NES on a chip and the games were all rewritten from scratch. Why not just use emulation? Not a great start, but at games would redeem themselves with Atari Flashback 2. This one actually uses real Atari 2600 hardware for their games, and as a result, we get an amazing experience here. And because this console uses composite cords, this makes it a very viable way to play 2600 games on real hardware, because the original 2600 only supported RF output. The lineup of games is also fantastic, with most of Atari's classic titles, unreleased prototypes, and even Activision titles. This is an amazing collection of games and proof that Activision is capable of doing great work. At Games would continue to make several more flashback consoles. Unfortunately, they switched to emulation after the Flashback 2, but these have still been great units. Overall, their relationship with Atari has been positive. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for the rest. Now let's talk about their work with Sega. In 2008, At Games released the Firecore Genesis. Surprisingly, Sega licensed this product, so it's actually an official Genesis console. This might have been a mistake though, because the console was generally not well received. The console had a cartridge port unlike the Atari Flashback consoles, but the sound quality was horrible. At Games would make multiple updates to this console, but none of them ever fixed the sound issues. Some of their later revisions would include wireless controllers, and these were horrible. You had to face the controller right in front of the console. Even if you were just a little bit off, it wouldn't register. Overall, these units were really lousy, and it's insane that they made so many updates, but didn't bother to fix the biggest issue. Sega would give At Games one more chance in 2017 with the Genesis Flashback console. This time, At Games utilized emulation rather than real hardware. Probably a good idea since they couldn't handle the real hardware. The sound issues from the previous units were fixed, but unfortunately the emulation on this unit was very poor. So once again, At Games let us down. In 2019, Sega announced the Genesis Mini. While At Games teased on Twitter that they were going to be involved with this, Sega ended up hiring M2 for the job, and thank god they did because the Genesis Mini is fantastic and M2 is a great company. So it's official, Sega was done with At Games. At Games would eventually delete that Twitter post by the way. Sega gave them way too many chances, so overall, At Games' involvement with Sega was very negative. With At Games being fired by Sega, they continued to make products with the licenses they still had, one of them being with Namco. 
but one particular product would be subject to some major controversy. In 2018, well-known YouTuber John Hancock was sent an early copy of the upcoming Bandai Namco Arcade Blast. This would be a unit that contains a few Namco arcade titles. His review of it was pretty positive. The arcade games look pretty accurate to their originals, and there didn't appear to be any glaring issues with it. This unit seemed like an innocent and typical collection, not the first time we've seen a type of collection like this. Keep in mind, no one else had this product at the time, and John Hancock has a big audience, so I imagine a lot of people bought this product based on his review of it. Unfortunately though, this product was very negatively received. But why? It didn't seem that bad in John Hancock's review. Well, let's check it out. Unlike their other consoles, this one's just a controller and a dongle that you can plug into the TV. Not sure why it's a Genesis controller, maybe they had a bunch left over after Sega fired them. I actually like the simplicity of this unit, and I think that's what At Games was going for with the Blast lineup of plug and plays. On first inspection, it seems like what we saw in John Hancock's video is pretty accurate. Nothing jumps out to me in a negative way, until you start playing it. This doesn't seem right at all. This is the NES version of Pac-Man. Let's be optimistic though, maybe this is a bad example. Let's try a different game. Alright, that settles it. They gave us the NES versions of these games. This was brought to light when Mad Little Pixel made a video reviewing this product showing that the NES versions of these games were included. Normally this would be fine, but in John Hancock's video we can see that the games look more like the arcade versions, and on the box we can see arcade screenshots. At Games is literally lying about what you're getting and they took advantage of a good YouTuber. Some people who disliked the product might have blamed John Hancock for it even though it's not his fault. They knew he had a big audience and they gave him a spiffed up version of the product just to make it look better than it really is. So what was At Games' explanation for this? Well, on Twitter, they didn't really say much. They just stated that the initial production run had the home versions, but later ones will have the arcade versions. No need to apologize for lying to the customer or anything. Bandai Namco was not happy with customers being misled. They approved the version that contains the arcade ports, not the one with the NES ROMs. This would establish a negative relationship between the two companies, and this would lead to a very interesting series of events. Because Ms. Pac-Man was created by General Computer Corporation, or GCC, this created an unusual copyright situation. Namco had the rights to the game, but they would have to pay royalties to GCC for all commercial releases. But with the home console market getting really big, this technically would slip under the radar and many home versions of Ms. Pac-Man were being created without the need to pay any royalties. However, when Namco released the Class of 81 arcade cabinet in 2001, GCC reminded Namco of the agreement they had. So this weird copyright situation resurfaced after all. Namco and GCC went to court over it, but Namco lost the case and had to pay GCC a large sum of money. So after this debacle, the two companies would start negotiating about transferring the full rights of Ms. Pac-Man over the Namco so that they would have 100% ownership of the game, no more royalty payments. However, At Games was also trying to negotiate with GCC behind Namco's back. The company, now called Bandai Namco, was already not happy with At Games' lousy plug-and-play consoles that misrepresented their games, so them trying to purchase the rights to Ms. Pac-Man was a big insult. On top of that, At Games sent GCC a picture of a mini Ms. Pac-Man cabinet that they were developing, hoping that they could negotiate something. As a response, Bandai Namco took At Games to court for copyright infringement, false advertising, and unfair competition. The lawsuit ended up being dismissed, and surprisingly, At Games actually secured the royalty rights to Ms. Pac-Man. Of course, Namco isn't going to want to pay royalties to a company that has misrepresented their classic titles and is doing shady business practices behind their back. So rather than doing that, they started editing Ms. Pac-Man out of games that she used to be in. So does At Games deserve the hate that they get? And are they capable of great work?
At Games burned their bridges with a few companies. Sega wasn't happy with the products that At Games made for them, so they ended up dropping them. Bandai Namco wasn't happy with their IPs being misrepresented on a plug-and-play, which ended up leading to a feud between them and At Games. At Games' reputation is definitely deserved for misleading customers. However, At Games is capable of making great products, and we've seen that with Atari Flashback. I'm not sure why they've had so many issues replicating that level of quality with other products. Hey, I just wanted to thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it this far, hit that like button. If you enjoy this type of content, hit the subscribe button for more content. Both of these things really help the channel grow. If you have anything to share, feel free to leave a comment. I read every single comment on this channel, and I'm pretty good at replying back. Anyway, have a good one.